into our Heartland Bighorn Traveler 39MB, the mid-bunk version, and let's take a look inside. So when you first walk in, there is the mid-bunk room. It has a couch that pulls out into a bed, and there's a lot of storage. And we have just miscellaneous electronics and other things stored in there. We have a blanket at the bottom um, and just an ottoman I made. And we have a cat cactus that I made for our cat Jinx. It's a scratching post. As you, <laughs> as you come into the left side of the RV, you enter into the kitchen and the dining room. Um, so on your left, there is the dinette, um, and it comes with two chairs, two wooden chairs, and this fold-up extension for the table, and we love that. Uh, it gives us a lot of space. It did come with two extra chairs um, that were under the bed, but we decided to take those out. And as you come to the right side, you enter into... The kitchen. So as you can see we have this awesome kitchen island and this huge single basin sink and we have so much storage. We have a huge pantry. Um, we just have all of our food, our dry food items stored in here and some craft items for me in those two cabinets and another set of cabinets for more dry food. And we have this residential fridge that opens at the top. And there are two freezer sections in the bottom, which we haven't used yet. <laughs> and as you come this way, we have our microwave, it is a convection oven slash microwave and it works really well. We have our stove top that has a glass top that comes up um, all the way and we have our little oven and over here uh, we 3D printed a paper towel holder and this is where our espresso machine is going to go. Um, we have more cabinetry and on this side of the island there is even more drawers and our trash can. Um, and as you enter this side of the RV you are coming into the living room. Over here we have a really great recliner couch um, it has two recliners that have a lever to pull out, and they do go back pretty far. And there was a huge sectional couch over here, but we decided to take that out and make this an office space. Um, so here is the office and uh, we also have a workout bike. <laughs> and then over here we have our huge 50 inch TV that came with the RV, more storage, and a fireplace. And I forgot to mention there is storage also above the recliners. That is one of the things that I really loved about this RV is all of the storage. We fit everything that we could ever need in here and there's more storage above. If you take a peek up above the pantry there is a loft up there which we'll go to next. Before we go to the loft when you enter into the RV there is a little coat closet which we just put in some shoe racks, some wall hanging shoe racks and um, they work great. And our control panel is above there. All the controls you could ever need. And as
as we come upstairs, there is a little ladder that comes down. So you can go up into the loft and I have fit up there. It is quite comfortable. Um, my niece loves being up there. It's a cool little hangout spot and our cat loves being up there. As you can see, our cat Jinx is just chilling up there and we use this for storage. As we make our way down the hall, there is a nice window. That is the other great thing about this RV is all the windows. Um, it makes you feel like you're outside and just all that natural daylight is awesome. And down the hall here, which is super naturally bright, is the bathroom. So we have this huge shower. It's a residential sized shower and um, I'm 5'2". It is huge for me. <laughs> I, I just added in this shelf for all of our items so that they don't fall all over the place when we're driving. And um, it does have a bench seat, which isn't my favorite, but some people would like that. And we opted to put in a composting toilet. We've had a composting toilet in all three of our RVs so far, and we love them. We have the Nature's Head composting toilet. And as you can see over here, there's a lot of open shelving. I opted to put in some baskets so that everything doesn't, again, move around when we are traveling. And there is a shelf above here and just some towel hooks. And um, on the other side, there is this sink with some storage underneath and storage above um, for the medicine cabinet. And I did put in the towel rack and the toilet paper holder. Right next to the bathroom, we have our thermostat. It is just a simple thermostat that is controlled by buttons. And the very last room of the RV inside here is the bedroom. So welcome to our bedroom. We have a sliding door here and it has a latch for when you're traveling. We have a huge king size bed. We've never had one of these before. So that is pretty cool. It does take up a lot of the room. So that takes some getting used to, but you still have a little bit of room to scoot around inside the, in the sides here. And this is also where I have my music streaming set up for Twitch. There used to be a dresser here. We took out four drawers and we sawed the middle so that I have a spot to sit and play piano. And we have our ring light and microphone and guitar, ukulele laptop and camera. There also is a TV in the bedroom. There's a TV in all three rooms of this RV, in the bedroom, in the mid bunk, and in the living room. So that's a pretty crazy feature that we didn't know that we were going to get. <laughs> and over here, there's a cabinet that opens up. We have our laundry basket in here right now and laundry detergent, but there is hookups for washer dryer combo or washer dryer stackable. And there's a bar above for hanging more clothes. And on this side, there is a very sizable closet. And a shelf above. It's organized chaos in there. Um, so this is my closet and our other closet is the three cabinets above the recliner in the living room. All right, now let's head outside. Hello, I was just told that I need to present the outside of the RV and talk about things. So this is me doing that. Um, this is actually one of the uh, 
things we found cool about this RV is that it has this compartment, which is right behind where the stairs are inside, which we already knew from the last RV, we want to make a separate cubby for Jinx to poop in. So that's what we did. And as you can see here, um, there's his litter box. And we also cut a hole in this side of the compartment. And then I 3D printed a little ring uh, to make it nice and smooth for Jinx. And we did the same thing um, on the bottom step of the vertical portion so that he can come in and out. And it's also easy for us to clean his litter box. This is one of the main cargo bays. Uh, it's got a little magnetic latch here. This is a bit of chaos. Not as bad as it used to be, but uh, just tools and a lot of the components I've been using to um, do sort of the electrical work and the upgrades that we wanted to perform. And you'll see this uh, goes through to the other side. We'll uh, leave it up for now. We also can hold two 30 pound propane tanks. Uh, so that lets us go for quite a while with, uh, in terms of our water heater, which we can either use uh, AC electrical or we can use our um, propane to heat it. Um, so that's what that's used for. It's also used for the oven and the stove and probably something else I'm forgetting right now, but um, the furnace. I think the furnace is probably an important thing to run. Uh, that can run off of um, propane as well. And if you come around here, this is my department of all the electrical stuff. Um, mini rant here, if you see the solar on the side thing, uh, you know, they try to tell you that it's basically solar ready. Uh, what I've learned from this is they literally wire these two pins to the battery and that is all they do. There's literally nothing related to solar. There's no charge controller. They just give you a connection to the battery. And when you buy one of these, they require that you buy a separate um, charge controller that goes in line with your solar panel. And it looks like it can be a very expensive way to go. So maybe fine if you just wanna play around with some solar, but uh, don't, don't think this is gonna be the end all be all for your, your solar setup. Um, something that's not gonna be as cool right now because it's during the day, but we'll show you anyway. You flip this switch and you've got LED lighting on the front here, as you can see on the left and right. And then also, if you look up here near the front, uh, we have an LED strip there. So this is nice if you're uh, trying to hitch up in the dark or unhitch uh, when you get to a campground late at night, which is not always the easiest thing. Of course, this is a fifth wheel. So this is, uh, we have a lock on it right now, but this is where the uh, unit itself connects to the truck bed. So the hitch is in the bed of the truck. And um, we'll show you in a second here. Well, we aren't gonna be able to power it up at the moment, but uh, we have a hydraulic uh, stabilizer system built in here. So that's what helps you get this to the right height when you're backing your truck up or pulling your truck away um, to hitch or unhitch. So that control system for the hydraulic is over here. Um, this is something we were unfamiliar with. Um, the fact that it is hydraulic, our last fifth wheel had uh, electric. Um, landing legs is what they're called, the two legs in the front. Uh, and then we had a stabilizer in the back with the old RV that was also electric. Um, this has hydraulics, so it uses pressurized fluid um, to move these um, jacks up and down. There are six of them, uh, which is due to the length of the RV, but that also helps with the stability. Um, I, we certainly noticed with our last RV with just the uh, legs in the front and the stabilizer in the back, uh, you would still get a, a fair amount of movement when you're walking around the RV. Nothing terrible, but this just makes it even more stable, which is very nice. The really cool thing about this is it has auto leveling, which we did not have before either. Um, so it, it actually is able to sense um, every sort of corner of the RV, how, how level it is, uh, and it adjusts the jacks to make sure that the RV is, is nice and level, which is something that is not um, been good for us in the past in terms of finding lots of campsites that have very uneven ground uh, doors uh, always wanting to open or being harder to open because you're fighting gravity that sort of thing so this is a, a very nice feature for sure um, I think it's also probably going to be less maintenance hopefully because uh, we did have some failures with our electronic um, legs in the past probably due to having too much weight from batteries but uh, this this is really nice, this, uh, this gets the job done. 
the hydraulic system also runs the slides, or at least three of the four slides. Uh, I'm not certain of why that is. I think it's either a limitation of the hydraulic system or how they had to set up this slide. But um, yep, hydraulics on all the main slides and the bedroom slide uses electric, but uh, that seems reasonable. So there's your control panel there. We're not gonna fire it up right now because we're nice and level and uh, parked. But here's where now we get into the electronics uh, that I've been working on a lot the past few weeks. I guess the last week primarily. Just we'll open this up. And, uh, this is certainly no longer stock. Um, this was a little bit simpler before, a lot smaller components. Um, our main stuff uh, that we've moved in here, there was only one battery prior to run your whole system. Uh, we are going to be putting our solar panels back on the roof soon. So we need a nice big uh, battery bank. <laughs> As you can see, here's where we put the rest of the batteries. This is actually for a generator, but we don't need a generator because we've got solar panels. Um, this is uh, six of our batteries, and then we've got the other two on this left compartment here for a total of eight. And these are 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries. Uh, we wire them in series parallel, which lets us use some smaller wire, save some money. Uh, so we run them in 24 volts. And um, when we do that, um, it means, like I said, we can get away with a little bit uh, less wire, but then we also have to drop that voltage down to run the 12 volt systems of the uh, RV, which I'll show you over here in a sec. So yeah, that's just batteries in there. This back up. All right, so if you come over here, um, like I said, your other two batteries. So these are wired in series and then they tie in with the others in parallel. We have a, our upgraded inverter. So this is how we can run all of our AC appliances off of our battery bank. Um, the RV only came with a thousand watt inverter and it was wired so it only ever powered the fridge. So if you wanted to run anything else, you're out of luck. Uh, even if you had the solar on the side thing, all you can run on AC is your fridge. We pulled all that stuff out. We now have the 3000 amp, sorry, 3000 watt uh, inverter in here, which can run just about everything we need in the RV uh, from our battery bank. Um, we also have a battery monitor in here. So there's a screen up in the bedroom uh, that shows how charged our battery bank is. So we can monitor that from inside. Uh, some breakers, just so we can turn things on and off. This is that DC to DC converter I mentioned earlier because the RV wants all of its DC stuff to run off 12 volts, but our battery bank is 24 volts. So this drops it from 24 to 12 and feeds into the rest of the system. Uh, up here is the hydraulics for um, mainly the pump that pressurizes the hydraulics for the jacks and the uh, slides. And aside from that, uh, we also have our little screen here. It's uh, actually a, a remote technically um, connected to our solar charge controller which presently does not have solar panels connected to it, but that is the next thing on the list. So this lets you control the charge controller, see how much power you're generating, uh, power that's going to the battery, voltage, amperage, all that fun stuff. So that's most of the work that's been done in here now. There are a few things you're not gonna be able to see because I've already closed them back up, but I'll at least mention them when we uh, go around to the side here. Uh, also, of course there's gonna be more crap in here, but uh, something that I'm not sure if we're actually going to end up using uh, is this easy reel thing. So the idea is you put your power cord for your RV on this and it's got a little motor, it'll spin so you can wind it up. Uh, I don't know if we'll actually use it. It might just be more hassle than it's worth, but interesting. Uh, and then of course more storage, which we're starting to utilize here. Let's this back up. And finally, uh, oh, and I should mention this connects to the, this is all one cargo area. So when I open this up, you're also um, sort of connected to this other side I was telling you about a second ago. Oh, it's, it's called a pass-through uh, cargo bay. So it's nice, uh, nice big, nice and bright, and uh, can actually fit quite a bit of stuff in here. Some of the work I was doing recently, I had taken this panel off, and that's how you get access to uh, the underbelly of the beast. There's all sorts of uh, plumbing in there. You've got electrical systems. I actually took out the um, converter, which is 
their fancy term for a battery charger that just tries to keep your battery topped up when you're on AC power. Uh, I removed that because our battery bank is 24 volts, so we certainly can't charge our 24 volt bank with a 12 volt converter. So I put a new one in there, uh, actually one that we had in our previous RV uh, that charges the 24 volt system. So that's in there. I also put in a automatic transfer switch, um, which is basically a fancy term for a box that you put your backup power into. You connect your main power, um, which you might be able to see here, our power cord going to the RV right now because we're uh, on mains or shore power as they like to call it. Um, you connect those two things to this box and then it has an output that goes to your main breaker panel. And that allows the RV or the automatic transfer switch to detect if our main power is disconnected or if we lose power or something like that, then it automatically switches us over to the inverter. So it takes about a second to two seconds to do that, but it's really nice and convenient, uh, especially if there's a, a crazy thunderstorm in the middle of the night or a power outage, uh, make sure you're not gonna have to get up and deal with that. It just kind of gracefully switches things over. So I splice that in inside this compartment um, and that was, I believe, uh, most of the work I did in there. We did a little bit of work to get the composting toilet in, but um, that's about all that happened in there. Something that seems a little bit unnecessary but interesting is they added another control panel here for the, um, the jack system or the stabilizer system. This basically just gives you the you know, same sort of controls as you have on the front. Uh, the little touch screen thing here, and I honestly haven't even played with this. It's probably got some Bluetooth features or something. I don't know. It's it's not something that has uh, been necessary thus far, but interesting, like I said. Um, what else? I guess the last thing here is just, they call this the docking station, docking center. Uh, this is where you make a lot of your plumbing connections. Um, so this is where your, your water comes in. You can either select that you want to use your um, hose basically as your main water source. Um, if you want to fill up your water tank, you turn that to tank fill and it fills your onboard water tank from the hose. Uh, you've also got dry camping, which would be if you're not connected to um, any sort of, um, you know, external water source, you just want to use your internal pump and pump the water out of your water tank. And then there's also a uh, winterize or sanitize feature here, um, which is useful when you want to um, put diluted bleach or antifreeze into the lines, depending on what you're trying to do. And then you also have a little valve here to control your uh, hot water heater. Um, this has to do with winterization. If you're not winterized, you want it to be normal. If you're in a winterized state, you typically are bypassed. Of course, you got a little light here. It's kind of cool. Um, have a little spray faucet, um, so that's handy for washing things down. You've got your hot and cold here. Um, you also have your cable and satellite connections, which we will probably never ever use because I made it this far without ever having cable. Um, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> we have the internet. And then you also get a nice um, outlet there if you need it. And of course, more cable connections because they're there's nothing more important, apparently, than the number of TVs and how many satellite and cable connections you have. So, that does that. And finally, we'll just point out here, um, we've got our hot water heater. So, we turn this on when we need it, but most of the time we just leave it off, save energy. Um, I think it's 10 or 15 gallons, something like that. It's been working fine. And then this is our furnace right here, uh, which we have needed a few nights already, but uh, it's going to be close to 100 on Wednesday, so I don't think we'll need that anytime soon. Finally, uh, you've got a few um, valves you can pull and play around with under here. Um, this is your, there are two gray water tanks, so that would traditionally be, you know, anything that comes out of your sink drain is gonna be your gray water, uh, shower drain as well. Uh, there are, so there's two gray tanks. This is the valve for the first one, and there's also a handle over there for the second one. You also have what's called a black water tank or wastewater holding tank, which you can, I'm sure, figure out what that means. Luckily, uh, since this RV is new, we've never used this tank and never planned to. So hopefully we never actually have to deal with this. So we actually just leave it closed all the time because the composting toilet does not connect to that tank. We just cut it off uh, and took off the toilet that came with the uh, RV. Um, so yeah, it's a, a nice clean tank and it will probably never be used, at least with us. Uh, but that handles right there 
Uh, when you open it, it, it allows it to come out and flow out this one main valve here. Um, you'll notice we have a hose attached to it. A lot of people will have a larger uh, hose connected to it. Uh, you typically only need that if you are draining your uh, wastewater tank. At least with this, it's just gray water. Um, so um, we're able to uh, not have to worry about uh, sort of the sanitary conditions as much with that, which makes it a bit, a bit more convenient. And I think that's the bulk of the interesting stuff. We already kind of talked about the slides, but the slides come in and out. Um, this final thing we could just mention, the power back here. So these clothes, you just drop them and they collapse like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, we have a power awning up here, which is pretty neat. Um, I haven't used it more than once or twice, just while there was a brief rain shower, but uh, looks like that would be nice for uh, if it is raining and we just want uh, you know, to sit outside and enjoy the rain. Uh, that is a possibility. I think we also failed to mention our uh, steps. These fold up in. Um, you have the door open, you fold the steps up, and then the door closes behind it. Uh, so nice big steps there. Finally, we've got a spare tire over here. And come around the back, we've got a ladder so that we can get on the roof if we need to do any inspections or work on the solar. And then here is our power input over on the side of the RV. And this is a 50 amp connector. Uh, traditionally, this would be a 240 volt connection, uh, at least here in the US. Um, so we can put, if we wanted to, you can pull about 12,000 watts through that uh, connector, which we can't do it where we're staying right now because we don't have a true 50 amp hookup, uh, but you can certainly get a lot of power through that, uh, certainly all the power we would ever need. And I think that just about does it uh, for the exterior tour. So thank you for joining us on our tour of our RV. We love it and we are excited to take many journeys and travel in it. Thanks for checking this out.